Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Porch Healthcare of Rose City and West Branch. Skilled nursing and rehabilitation facilities in beautiful northern Michigan. The Rose City facility is a leader in dementia care, specializing in the treatment and care for those with Alzheimer's. For more information or to schedule a tour, call us now. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mountain Tom Road, Maho. Hi, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Glad you could join us. On today's show, saddle up for some extremely fun cowboy races. We're heading to Liberty Pines for part one of our coverage of this year's annual event that encourages having fun with your horse in a little friendly competition, no matter what your age or experience. Sean Beardsley and crew brave another rainy weekend to extol the amazing virtues of natural horsemanship. Then, what is it actually like growing up Amish, and what would it take to leave the faith with your husband to explore a secular faith. We'll sit down and discuss that with Michigan author Barbara Yoder in part one of our visit with this extraordinary woman who did just that. We'll talk about it and her book, Finding the Way. Stay tuned. It's coming your way on this edition of Michigan Magazine. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Mayo for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mayo. The equestrian spirit is spreading like wildfire throughout Michigan. More and more are coming to the stables and arenas to watch in awe at how this large animal can become one with his master, thanks in part to the art of natural horsemanship. Locally in northeastern Lower Michigan, Liberty Pines of Rose City, under the direction and ownership of Sean Beardsley, is spreading the word and inviting all to become a part of the enjoyment, whether in ownership or as a spectator of the respect and love shown between an owner and his horse. Liberty Pines was the scene this past October of the second annual event celebrating the fun of ownership as they presented another extremely fun cowboy race. It's an event for all ages and levels of experience. We're having the second second annual extremely fun cowboy race at our barn. We have an arena that we set up many obstacles and we test your horse's bravery and this year we're going to set up an obstacle course for the kids. So if you want, if your child is not old enough to go through all the obstacles on their own, they can be led by their parents and it's going to be a little bit smaller area. And uh, last year we had a lot of kids that were led to the big course mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun but I think a smaller area for kids even younger it would be great so that's what we're going to change this year. Um, we just learned from last year we had so many people 
last year ride in it and this year it's just gonna be better each year will get better <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can tell I mean this this time you can surely bring your entire family if they're into horses or if they're not into horses it's a good chance to to look and see how the people interact in a, in a good way in the horsemanship right I promote safety at my barn Liberty Pines I train natural horsemanship and this way we get the horses out we get them all together it's a fun time for just the town to come out bring your horses and we send them through this obstacle course and we're just you know excited for this year this is called extremely fun cowboy race not to be confused with the Craig Cameron mm -hmm. cowboy race that we see on TV mm -hmm. but I took it from that as an example that if people watch that on our FD TV Craig Cameron they'll see the uh, I got hooked on watching the extremely or extreme cowboy race so I made the extremely fun knowing that I wasn't that competitive mm -hmm. and my horse wasn't ready to do that any anything that extreme so this way it's just the average person can come out and go through the course and have fun with their horses like have as much fun as you can yes <laughs> and safe I like safety yeah. and you had people coming from all over last year and uh, rain or shine we had a questionable weather point now and then but the, 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 it didn't dampen any of the spirits I can tell these people love their horses oh my goodness I was so surprised the weather that we had that so many people still came out but that's a true horse person mm -hmm. is you get out there with your horse no matter the weather <laughs> anyways we're gonna have the youth go through the lead line class and we've only got like five obstacles so it shouldn't take too long but um, we're gonna walk you through the course and the main thing here is I teach natural horsemanship and the main focus is safety if you feel unsafe at any time dismount don't worry about it everything's cool I mean we're just here for fun even though you are being judged we've worked long and hard on this and it's a bummer this weather but you know we're cowboys and cowgirls and we'll deal with it and that they did despite a little rain and cooler weather everyone was having a ball competition continued through the afternoon with a delicious hot meal and beverages available to keep the participants strength and the spirits up the excitement culminated with a tie for first place and a runoff, all in good fun. Because that's what it's all about. The extremely fun cowboy races at Liberty Pines in Rose City. Looking forward to the third annual event next October. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by the Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. For home, medical, and health care products, visit Row City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of Row City City Limits. Row City Drug has a complete diabetic department, including shoes. Serving Michigan for over 20 years, Row City Drug, Row City. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Row City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. The life of the Amish, their conservative traditions and family values hold intrigue and mystery to many who cross paths with them in Michigan. What would it truly be like to live that seemingly simpler and less complicated lifestyle? On this edition of Michigan Magazine, we have the chance to step just inside for a quick look through the eyes and experience of author Barbara Yoder of Chase, Michigan, not far from Reed City. After much soul-searching, Barbara and her husband Eugene chose to leave the lifestyle. Barbara grew up the youngest of a large Amish family in Michigan, and Eugene's roots and family extend into Montana. Barbara's love of writing was encouraged by her husband and resulted in the publishing of her first book titled Finding the Way, a fictional piece. In our visit, Barbara told us about the storyline and how it was inspired by the life she knew very well. Uh, it patterns a lot after my own life, mm -hmm. a young Amish girl, mm -hmm. and just the general painting a picture of what it's like to be Amish, a mm -hmm. young Amish girl, and 
the ups and downs that she went through mm -hmm. and uh, finding God, finding romance, mm -hmm. getting married. Ever since I was a little girl, mm -hmm. I had a real passion for writing. I think I wrote my first little story when I was nine years old. Oh. And I wrote a lot of short stories over the years as a teenager. And I began to really think I could do something with this probably after I had our second son. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking I could, if I kept working at it, so I rewrote the whole thing probably four times. Oh, really? Over a period of three years. Oh. So the first write probably only took me like six months to actually write the rough draft of the story. Mm -hmm. And then I kept going over it. And then I met a lady that does a lot of writing. Also, not professionally, but she does a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. And she sat down and she spent a lot of time with me. She's very good and she pointed out different things to me and so she just like really was uh, the key person that really just opened up my uh, creative side in writing. Mm -hmm. But you loved to do it in the first place. I mean, yes. This is a lot yes. That, uh, but did you see it actually coming into a book uh, back then? Is that was your whole purpose was to maybe get the story out and publish it to sell? Well, it was my dream, but my husband really encouraged me. Oh, there you go. And so that was probably, if it wouldn't have been for him encouraging me, mm -hmm. I probably would not have thought that I could actually do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm working on a sequel. A sequel? And so okay. I'm hoping that that will go as well as this one has. All right. Where did you go with the manuscript? How did you get it published? And tell us a little bit about what you had to go through to finally get it out there. Well, I went through a lot of rejection first. Really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> In the process of polishing it up, after I did the first rewrite, I probably got about four rejections. Mm -hmm. And so, but I kept on thinking, well, if I just keep doing it better, and maybe it's how I present it. And then I got in contact with the company, uh, with a smaller publisher out of Arizona. Mm. And they were very nice to work with. And they encouraged me and kind of took me through the whole thing. And they had an editor that then did the final uh, putting everything together for me because a lot of the um, English is like the, um, putting in the semicolon, putting in this and that, you know, mm -hmm. was stuff that I wasn't real sure about, but mm -hmm. they did a good job in teaching me a lot. So you, were you corresponding with them in Arizona while you were still living in Michigan? Was that it? Yes, how, yeah. Okay. By phone, in emails, okay. tons of emails. Ah, it's amazing what the email and internet can do nowadays. Yes, I mean, it so yeah. makes the world so much smaller. But after they first had it published and uh, the response that you got, what kind of response have you been getting from the book? Uh, mostly positive mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think probably there's been some Amish that have a little bit been offended by it just because they tend to be um, very private and mm -hmm. some things are maybe not quite as private as what they would mm -hmm. prefer. But I also try to be careful not to write anything that would be offensive to them mm -hmm. or make them look bad because uh, I don't see them that way. This mm -hmm. is a choice we made, but I still think they have a lot of good things that mm -hmm. we still teach our children that right. we like about them. Mm -hmm. So, As I was reading the first few chapters there, I did notice that it was, uh, you had to be first-hand experience to bring out the details of these, you know, it's like you're inside the buildings and the, and, uh, uh, and, and the services, uh, yes. three-hour services and yeah. going through the process. You had to have some sort of experience in doing that. Uh, so you pretty much kept a journal of your life as you go on. Was that part of your, your life as an, as an Amish child? I've always kept a journal, yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the experience were just uh, probably drawn off my sisters, maybe, or some of my friends, to just ideas that mm -hmm. gave me. Mm -hmm. And so it was pretty easy to do, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you still have, uh, your sisters are still in the Amish faith, or? or uh, I family? have, yes, I have a couple of sisters that are still Amish, mm -hmm. and I have a brother and sister that are Mennonite, and then I have two other sisters that have also left the Amish. Mm -hmm. But my mother is still Amish, and we try to get down and see her a couple times a year. And uh, at first, the relationship was very, well, it was hard for them mm -hmm. because it was scary to them because they have their own little world that is safe to them that they right. create. And then when we stepped outside of that world of safety that they had created for us all their lives, it was very scary for them mm -hmm. because they were like, 
unsure of what might happen to us. Mm -hmm. But as the years have gone by and they've seen that we still appreciate the things they've taught us and have kept a lot of the things they've taught us, it has again opened up, that has helped open up that avenue for a relationship with them again. Mm -hmm. Because of the strict shunning practices, mm -hmm. it was pretty uncomfortable at first. Mm -hmm. But 12 years have passed and and uh, I think I would say we have a good relationship with both his parents and my parents mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. Growing up in the Amish family and living the life you're living now, can you tell us any misconceptions that perhaps uh, we have about the Amish or the Amish have about today's society? Is there any misconceptions that, uh, that, yes. really, that people should know about really that it isn't the way it is? Well, as far as like the Amish, their misconception of anybody that's not Amish, mm -hmm. I think they, like when we left, for instance, I think they think anybody that's not Amish, they're just probably, possibly into drugs mm -hmm. or becoming, um, I'm not sure, they mm -hmm. just, it's so scary to them that they, that's the misconception. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of myths out there that we used to be asked when I was little about, why don't you have electricity? Now we've heard that the reason you don't have electricity is because the evil spirits could come in off mm -hmm. the lines, mm -hmm. different little mm -hmm. things like that, that mm -hmm. um, really the reason they live the way they do is tradition mm -hmm. and just wanting to preserve a lifestyle and uh, part, a lot of it I guess has become actually a religious thing to them too, you know, that it's almost sacred to have a horse and buggy, mm -hmm. you know, to most of them, I think that's how they see it. Mm -hmm. But the reason that they are so strict is just trying to preserve that. As I was reading your first few chapters, I <clears throat> did notice it was very similar to any childhood, really, you know, uh, you had your friends and you would uh, have your secrets and you would have uh, your your evenings with the family, no television and, and no radio, things of that sort. But it was, children seem to be all alike, no matter where you go. In the early ages, they always have the moment of wonder and are you know, influenced by a lot of things. Yes. Yes. But uh, in coming to the end of your, your writing of the Finding the Way, is there anything that uh, you'd like people to see or get from the book? Uh, is there some reason, perhaps, that they or a feeling that you think that uh, they'll come away with after reading your book? Well, I'm hoping that they'll see the, the peaceful side mm -hmm. of, of the Amish mm -hmm. and the faith thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's all about, I think, families going to church together and praying together mm -hmm. and, and having God kind of as their, the focus of their of their uh, community mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of what I would like for people to see in the book is Mm -hmm. Is that? Mm -hmm. And that feeling will prevail as you share the days with main characters Rachel and Elizabeth in Finding the Way by Barbara Yoder. Later we'll continue our conversation about living the Amish life and learn more about that tradition. Then we'll hear how Barbara and Eugene Yoder took the step away from the strict order and how they still maintain their family ties despite the differences. Then we'll learn more about her plans of the sequel to Finding the Way. All this and more on a future edition of Michigan Magazine. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com Thanks for joining us in Michigan Magazine. Time to hit those back roads once again. Another friendly reminder to be sure and email your name and address to us at iwatchmichiganmagazine at gmail.com for a chance to win this adorable teddy bear made of Michigan alpaca wool, courtesy of Crystal Lake Alpaca Farm near Frankfort, Michigan. We had the opportunity to visit the farm during National Alpaca Farm Days last month and had the extreme pleasure of meeting our viewers from that corner of the state who are alpaca lovers. 
and there were many. Also, we were blessed at being at the right place at the right time to record and get on video the birth of a brand new addition to the farm. You can watch the entire event on our YouTube channel, Spirit of Michigan, all one word. Simply go to our main website, michiganmagazine.com, and click on our YouTube channel link and watch for the upcoming segment of our visit at the Alpaca Farm on Michigan Magazine here on RFD TV. Remember, email us now for your chance to win in the subject line of your email, make sure you tell us you want to win the Alpaca Teddy Bear. Uh, many new shows are coming your way soon on Michigan Magazine, so stay tuned, including a dog show to benefit fellow canines and felines at area shelters. What an event that was. So many canine and feline lovers in our state. Also, we take in the Hail Balloon Festival for excitement high above the Michigan landscape, plus more segments from Michigan's Renaissance Festival in Holly. Our calendar is full and brand new shows coming down the pike. So stay tuned and stay with us here on our FD TV and follow us each day on all our social media outlets and we'll meet you here again. Have a great week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Canyons Lakeside Resort and Marina, located on the shores of beautiful Sage Lake. Get away to their newly remodeled beautiful bed and breakfast or their historic 13-room hotel. Special events and activities for all ages. Call now or go online for more information on this Michigan treasure. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo.